Hey guys, Matt here. Today we're going to have a quick look at mic choice for voiceovers. I've done another video on this before, but this one's going to be really quick and I'm just going to have a quick look at frequency responses on a few popular microphones and just explain why certain mics work better than others. And I'm going to keep it in really simple terms for you to be able to understand because, you know, it's something that I'm still learning as I acquire more microphones and really experiment more with voicing, music and that sort of thing. At the moment, I'm talking into this Nude 251, which is a copy of the Telefunken Elam 251. Essentially, it has this nice bottom end on it. It has quite a bright top. And this thing is fantastic for like, if you're going to have a rap vocal or pop vocals that really need to cut through the mix and sit right up there and also have a lot of weight in that bottom end to give them a nice fullness. Unfortunately, this mic for me, I think it's probably a bit too bright for my voice for voiceovers. So I use my Shure KSM44A. I'll put the frequency response up right now. Essentially with this microphone, you can see it has a boost in that kind of high mid area, three, four, five, six K. This is where you start to get a lot of the bite in your voice and then sort of six, seven, eight K, there's a nice air in your voice and it starts to roll off a little bit. It's a tiny little bit in that 10, around that 10 kilohertz zone, uh, which is more where that sibilance starts to happen. But thankfully it's not too high once it gets to that point. The reason I love this mic is it's pretty flat across the board. It's got that nice boost up around that uh, high mid area. And that for me gives a really nice cut through for all my voice work. Uh, it's not too bright in that top end, so I don't get all that sibilance that I get in a lot of other microphones. So that's one of the reasons I love using this mic. So let's have a look now at the Sennheiser MKH416. This is a really popular voiceover mic. Uh, you see this in a lot of different studios, and it has a really, really nice sound. It takes a little bit of a different kind of uh, approach because it's a shotgun mic, and it also has some proximity effect as you come in and out. It really changes the sound a bit. Uh, but essentially what you can see is in the frequency response, it's got this bump right up in the top end where it really starts to lift up and it gives a lot of that air. It's uh, quite a smooth mic in the top end, so the sibilance isn't as noticeable. It really just has a, re a nice airy sound up in the top. The bottom end is really solid. It's just a fantastic sounding microphone. Let's have a look now at the Neumann U87 AI. And obviously here's another microphone that's used in a heck of a lot of studios. It's a really popular mic, not just for voiceovers, obviously. It's used on a lot of albums recording, you know, different styles of music. But essentially looking at the frequency response, you can see it's pretty flat across the board and it has that brightness in the top end again. The top end is quite smooth. So they, they really do control that top end well. And what I tend to find is that a lot of the recordings that I'm receiving are not using these more expensive microphones. They're using cheaper microphones, which are kind of modeling these more expensive microphones, but they're not controlling the top properly. So for example, let's have a look at the Rode NT1A. Here's the frequency response right here. You can see that boost up around that 10, 11, 12 kilohertz mark and this is where all the sibilance is coming in and the problem is it's not so much that it's a bright mic it's it's just not controlling that brightness very well to the point where I get audio where it's not just essy it's literally making strange whistling sounds uh, which is really disturbing I think all the dogs in the neighborhood are going to end up at my house every time I edit some of these files but the brightness is not so much the issue, it's the controlling of the brightness. I've also played around with the Rode NT1. I've got some videos on here too. And you can hear they've they've basically pulled down that uh, top end, made it a heck of a lot flatter. But the way that the mic handles the top end is still pretty similar. So if you put the audio into your, you know, your door, start editing and start pulling up that top end, it doesn't control the top end very well. It's not very smooth. So... When you're picking your microphone for voice work, if you don't have a huge budget, just try out a few, watch some YouTube vids, make sure you find something that's going to work for your voice. Females especially have a lot of trouble with those mics that are really toppy. So try and look for warmer, vintage styles of mics. The Roswell K47, for example, that's a, a style of mic based on the original Neumann 47s, which have a more vintage sound. They're not so pronounced in the top end. Anything in that kind of 47 range is going to basically help you with that top end. But yeah, definitely go and check out a few mics. Be very aware of how your voice sounds so you know what kind of mic is going to suit your voice. 
for example, I know that I'm sibilant. I know that it's a problem that I have. So I tend to approach it and look for mics that are going to work with my sibilants. So hit me up if you've got any questions or comments, leave them below, like the video, hit subscribe, keep an eye out for the next video. I'll see you then.